Hello and welcome to another edition of Fermanagh GA TV. This weekend we're coming from Emmett Park, the home of Listener Ski Emmets. And our special guest today is Sean Keenan of Listener Ski. Sean, you're very welcome to Fermanagh GA TV. Good to be here, lads. Uh, coming up on the show tonight, we take a look back at the Fermanagh's Division 1 games last night. We also look forward to the fixtures tomorrow. Um, Mark, I like the way you are wearing tonight. Thanks very much, Corey. Thank you very much. Uh, I like the way you're dressed a bit better this week. Uh -huh. Corey, what was your take on the matches last night? How did the club football go on from the last night? Plenty of football played last night throughout the whole of Fermanagh. Um, also, the game Thursday night changed for Dona and Newtown Butler. Newtown Butler coming off the better, 2-13 to 2-11. Dona stayed pointless and to hard fought two points for Newtown Butler than a derby. Last night's games, probably pick of the games, was a massive storage spray in Camden Ware Park going on. They were the Harps come out the better again, Ed and Eight, 3 13 to 2 13. Stephen McRone, double yellow card right at the start of the second half, was a massive blow to the other side. Bell Coo, who can stop them, eh? Bell Coo 1 11, T Moore, not 9. Johnny Feeney kicked not 7, so he's certainly back. And some, I'm not sure about Matthew McAloon, kicked 1 2 for Bell Coo in a senior debut. That's what good for him in the future. And a big game in Tempo last night. Ross Lane went to Tempo. How did they get on? Two big teams met in Tempo, of course. Tempo 11 points, Ross Lane 7 points. Dora Keenan, Neil McElroy, Thomas Campbell all 11 points. And that's two defeats in a row now for Ross Lane, so it's a worry. And there was another derby game on down in West Front last night. Uh, you had uh, Aaron Gales going over to neighbours uh, Devonish in Garrison. Yeah, Aaron Gales did point us from three games again. Devonish 10 points, Aaron Gales 9 points. It seemed to be a sort of a shooting spree between John O'Flanagan and Seamus Ryder and Devon's come out the better. I was chatting to Eddie O'Reilly at the start of the year and he said, you know, Blake's not a yo-yo side, they're Division 1 now, 3 or 4 years in the troughs. But they've played 3 and lost 3, so it's not a good start for our deals. And um, Sean, just on the Division 2 games, Tony Collins, what's he done this year? On 3 wins from 3, he's beat Adam C last night. That's probably well, 3 wins from 3. And Tony's been harping on about last year, we only won three games in Division 1 throughout the whole year, so he certainly he's made us better. And then up to Adam C last night, we knew it was going to be a hard game, we only had eight points. Um, we need to, no uh, complacency in the game, uh, we, knew, we knew that before we went up, but Adam C are a very good team, I thought to be honest, and I think teams will go up there and they won't come away with any points for it. Well, I see he's won three games last year in total, so he's won three already, so Tony Collins is doing something right. Coming right, other well, division two games last night, Benelak v Enniskill, and who'd have said at the start of the league that Benelak could be top off for round three and Enniskill would be bottom? What's happened to Enniskill, do you know? Yeah, well, um, I'm sure Warren Dixon will be pulling his hair right, you know, they've had a bad start of the season, but Benelak are also a team in the ascendancy, they've got some great players there, they've got the Cullen yeah. twins. <laughs> That are on the on the county panel, Keen Connor, um, uh, Kieran McBrain there as well, he's a good upcoming player. Um, and Skillman will be looking for the likes of uh, Ray McCluskey to get back in there and push the thing on, yeah. or a few good wins, get off the bottom of the table. Um, we've got Brian McAleer there as well. I see Anna Skill, you know, coming back and, and regaining promotion possibly. I know the one that made a championship last year, but I haven't seen it kicked on this year. Um, a few NFL finals on this weekend too, today and um, again tomorrow. Yeah, well, Sunday in Crow Park, we've got uh, a big game for Derry down in Dublin. Dublin juggernaut, can they be stopped? Um, you know, they've got, they've got great physical strength. There's going to be a huge battle in the middle of the yeah. field there. With Michael Darren McCauley coming up against the likes of Patsy Bradley, who's a season campaigner. Mark Lynch will be looking to get in there. Possible all star call for him this yeah. year. Um, we also have uh, Donny Ball and Monaghan for it. What's your take on that one? Uh, well, I'm going to go for Dublin, Donny Ball, Calvin and Tipperary for the day's games. Get your tenor on that and you'll be lifting £48 pound come Monday morning. You could do it with the pork. Well, thank you, you would do. <laughs> Where's your blazer? <laughs> um, we're now going to start. Last week we spoke to Ryan Jones who got three games out of four right in his predictions. But we thought there's a lot of pressure on you know, players that are playing. So this week we're going to start a Fermanagh GA quiz where each one will answer a special guest seven Fermanagh GA related questions. Now, here's the question, he hasn't seen them, he's been trying to look at them. Sean, I'm going to give you seven questions, see how you go and what's your knowledge in football, right? Well, I'll give you roughly ten seconds on each, but let's try and be quick. What Fermanagh senior club did Val Murray manage in 2013? Val Murray, was it Aaron Gales? 
Clark. You've got one out of one. He's a Bobby Shannon man, is that right? He is, call him a guest. Who is the only Fermanagh player to have played every minute in this year's National League? Yeah, that's a tough question. Um, it's hard luck by him maybe Owen Donnelly. You've got two out of two. Who won the Fermanagh Minor Championship in 2013? Uh, I actually know this because it hurts because we actually thought we were maybe going to win the Minor Championship last year. Probably your local club, Derek Donnelly. You're not bad, and three out of three. Name me the surname of the Devon senior footballers, John and Terry. Um, John and Terry O'Flanagan, very good footballers, boy. I thought that was a bit of an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Who are currently top of Fermanagh's Division 1 Junior Air Cup League? Um, well, I suppose Rosleigh last, last week beat this in ski, so I think that's Rosleigh. Five out of five. From beating. And this is probably an easy one again, too. What Devonish man done goals for Fermanagh? This year in the NFL in Longford. So Thomas Chase made from his debut, was it? Six out of six. And this is probably the toughest one. Who scored Bell Coo's only goal in the 2013 Senior Football Championship final of Victor Osley, 112 to 19? Stephen McGuire, not possibly. Seven out of seven, I'm impressed. Well done, Sean. Uh, Borg, there's another full set of senior football club fixtures on tomorrow at 1 pm. Can you give us a wee rundown into those games, please? Yeah, no problem. Just remember, the games are at 1 o'clock, not half 3, so get out there and support your team. Um, we'll start off with Dona at home to Derry Gonley. Derry Gonley, the top scorers this year in Division 1. Dona currently pointless, so tough there. I'm going to go for Derry Gonley to win that game. Um, more of an Ederney and Devon, so we tomorrow in Ederney. It's a repeat of last year's League Division 1 final. There's very little between them. But I just think home advantage could push for Edney, so I'm going to go for Edney there. I think the possible tie tomorrow is the Team Moore versus Temple game. Uh, Team Moore off that flare so far this year. To have, as you can understand from round one, he's got to draw up there. That's uh, a good place to go, sure. Yes, yes. I think, you know, Temple are looking excellent. Uh, Darren King at the moment. He's playing some awesome football and we just wish he was in the county squad, but he's not. Oh, my bonus there as well for Team Moore, very hard to stop. You know, I think he just plays maybe another point with Arnold. Honestly, he actually hurt the shoulder last night when he's in a sling, so that's a huge blow for the motion. It certainly is. Certainly is. Um, Union Butler and Gales, I think this is a massive game for Gales. If another defeat is going to be played for and lost for, it's going to be tough for Gales to bounce back after that. Um, Newtown, I probably have to fancy Newtown Butler on their home pitch. It's in Newtown? It's in Newtown, yes. And well, I think I'm going to be used to tie I'm going to tie the 2013 Championship Final League run, Rossley and Belcoo. The last time they met in the league, Rossley failed to score, so I'm sure they'll have to post this time. Belcoo, best defence in the league this year, they've only conceded 21 points in three games. That's amazingly not seven, which is terrific defending. Johnny Feely on fire again last night. Belcoo's definitely kicking in the gear. Rossley, they've lost the last two. There's a bit of pressure on O'Donnell and Hart. You know, I'm sure they're not there voluntarily taking on Rossley. And they'll be expecting result tomorrow, but I want to put my head and go for Bell Coo. Very interesting, uh, uh, Sean, I'd just like to ask uh, you a few questions, um, just in relation to the referee and the implementation of the Black Guard. Yeah. How do you think it's done so far from Anna Club Football? Well, from a personal point of view and from Mrs. Key's point of view, Cormac, um, we've had two Black Yards so far this year against us. We actually haven't had none for us. So um, we have. Uh, Kinali, I think the last five minutes we got the uh, Kinali got a, a black yard, and last night the last two months Adam C got a black yard. So I feel maybe last night there was a tackle going through on one of our boys in the first minute, and he got a yellow yard. So yeah. I, I, I'm not too sure. Like, and then in the coming in the closing minutes, yeah. maybe a black yard, and then for the same tackle, I just don't think that. I think referees are afraid of the sand player off so early in the game. Or give me at the point there's a there seems to be a bit of inconsistency as to what stage, oh, sure it is. What stage yeah, of the it is. game the referee will give out his black card. You know, if there's two minutes I to think go. If there's two minutes played, you're gonna pick up a yellow card. If there's two minutes to go, you're gonna pick up a black card. And that's what I'm asking. Any manager referees out there, come on the show and be a special guest, maybe tell us otherwise. But at the moment that's the trend. Um, there's other Division 2 games as well, Lamar, you should work on this time, tough game. Any other Division 2 game catches you any at all, Sean? I would probably say maybe Kinali versus Enniskillen, probably my tie of the day. Um, Enniskillen, three losses out of three, Warren Dixon has to be thinking, 
What's his aspirations? He has to just sit down and say, what am I thinking here? Yeah. He needs a win tomorrow. If he doesn't win that match, they aren't going to make the phase two of Division Two football. Canale, I've been playing on the scale last week, Canale the week before. I can only see one winner, but I suppose Tomás Carrigan, Rory Carrigan, excellent footballers. Tomás Carrigan, probably one of the best footballers in front of man at the minute. And Rory Carrigan won't be far behind him in a couple of years' time. Well, I think Tomás is playing some exceptional stuff at the moment. Yes. Hey, you know, the defenders like Last week it was said that against Maguire's Bridge, Rory and Tomás scored 115 yeah. between them. That is that's just mind blowing scoring yeah. between the two of them. I think we need to find some sort of cotton route to wrap around Tomás Corrigan for the anthem game. Wrap around him and maybe also wrap around Rory Corrigan because he can be the surprise <laughs> weapon. Very well he can be the surprise weapon this year for one of our anthem game. Sean, I see here in the parts in great condition out there. Um, you've got a seven side tournament, I believe, coming up on uh, the 27th of May, is that right? Yes, um, the 24th of May, Cormac Game there. It's uh, for Reynolds and Wire. We have a senior and a number 14 competition being held. Um, mm -hmm. Lights of Rochelle, Home and Newtown. A few, too many to mention there. Our teams is coming. It'll be a very good day and a great cause, of course, for club captain Reynolds and Wire. Fair play this, fair play this. Um, folks, that's been all we have time for this week. Um, it's been great having you watching. I've been part of the garden. Sean, thank you very much for, um, thank you very much for listening to the Amos Club. The, the biscuits are a bit soft now, but the tea's not bad. Or we'll let you get your wedding now, anyway. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, then, let me see your blazer next week. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's, let's be honest here, if you, you know, go out and support the club tomorrow, one o'clock games. Cormac and we're off to the old bar now, let's see the ski, Collie Cardo will be a pint. So, go out this weekend, support the club, and if you're a club team or a club player who wants to appear on a show like Sean Keane or Ryan Jones last week, please let us know. And thank you and God bless.